I get to kind of tell my story and hopefully empower other women. Everyone can do something, whether it's donating a dollar or five dollars or 50,000 if you have it, whether it's telling other people about it, keeping it at the top of people's minds. No matter how small it is, it's strength in numbers and it really, it really does all make a difference. And I've, I've seen it firsthand. Hello, folks. Welcome to another episode of my podcast, What Shapes Us, here at the GoPro Mountain Games. And uh, I'm talking to two incredibly impactful human beings, the one and only Abby Wren and Max McDonald. And uh, we're going to talk about making an impact in the world whilst playing in the beauty of Vail. You know, being here at, at GoPro Mountain Games, there's a bunch of athletes, right, and people who are high performers in specific spaces in the outdoors. I see you both as outdoor lifestyle evangelists. You know, like you, you're, you're out here preaching, like living at the, at, at the highest level and you do it from, from, from very interesting directions. So I'm gonna start with you uh, because your story is, is amazing. How would you describe uh, how you've come to this place of, of evangelism? <laughs> <laughs> it's wild, man. Um, I grew up in rural Montana, middle of nowhere. Um, so the mountains and the outdoors are just a f part of the fabric of who I am. Um, and when I was 15, I lost all my hair to alopecia. So it just started falling out in handfuls in the shower when I was just entering high school, which was a wild experience at that age. Because no one makes you feel insecure at all in high school if everything yeah. is functioning normal, <laughs> let alone yeah. if something like that, like losing all of your hair starts to happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a really wild journey mentally to go through that. Um, over the years and now as a makeup artist and a, a creative makeup artist, I get to kind of tell my story and hopefully empower other women. That's, that's really my goal here is to em empower other women through my artistry. And so I paint my head and turn myself into crazy, uh, fun, bright, colorful creations to spread that message and to hopefully bring more awareness to alopecia, but also just to empower anyone that feels a little different and like they can't fit in my whole message is you know different is different is dope so I'm, I'm really excited you know to be here at the mountain games again because this environment is just so special you can tangibly feel the magic in this place um but it's really because of the people too max ah it's a tough tough act to follow it's an incredible and, story uh, uh, when you go to your instagram page like one of the first thing it says is like 116 countries. Um, and I, I stopped to think about that the other day. I was like, that's a lot of life. That's a lot of, that's a lot of pursuit. What, what have you been pursuing in, in, in your journey around the world? The unknown for, for a large part. I lived in the US in Boston um, about 10 years ago and I had a very nice situation. Everything was going incredibly well. And it's at that point that I realized I was too comfortable. Life was going too well that I needed to, to shake it up a little bit and, and, then, and then move from there. And um, yeah, kind of chasing a bit of discomfort as well. The, the first hundred countries are easy, but the ones afterwards, the goal is to go to every country in the world and the ones afterwards are the difficult ones. And, and you'll know this, you've been to, to some, some pretty hard places to travel. Um, they're the ones that really, that really see humanity and you see, what you've been through, what they're going through, and a lot of times what you can do to help um, not only those people, but just humanity around you. Mm. Having been born in a first world country and, and come from that position of privilege with a passport, you know, that I just happened to win the lottery and be born in a first world country. So I have a piece of paper that says, I'm a good person apparently, and I can travel to all these places whereas someone else is, is not because they just happen to be born on that piece of land. Um, so I definitely want to make the most of that and then help those that maybe aren't as, as fortunate as I am. It's funny you say that. I have a friend, incredibly gifted, talented young surfer um, from Senegal. His name is Sharif Fall. I mean, and this, this kid is, he's a world-class talent. 
but because he comes from from Senegal and from a place that is uh, primarily a uh, Muslim culture, the work that we had have had to do just just to get him a six month visa uh, to come to, to the states, it took like two and a half years. He finally got it. He came to the states this summer, and his level, the impact that he's made on the rest of surfing, people are just like, wait, what? Wow. Like, yeah. They're surfers of this level from the African continent. And they can surf like, I mean, like you just said, the idea that he didn't get that lottery ticket to have a, you, you said it really well, a piece of paper it's that says you're, you're a good enough person that you're you good to go. You, yeah. can, you can go wherever you well, wherever you, you'd like to, just let us know where and when and for how long as, as you wish. Yeah. Um, and that brings me to, to the, the, the dynamic of both of you. Like, your, your situation, um, Abby, you easily could turn inward. And instead, um, you make this very bold choice to, to use it to empower others to feel comfortable in whatever they're going through. Why? It's easy to kind of see everything I'm doing now and, and see all of the good work and the positivity and the color and the, the vibrancy that I like to bring to everything, but it hasn't always been that, right? It has been a lot of mornings and late nights of, of being like, what is going on? What is wrong with me? You know, as a, as a woman, not to have those feminine markers. attributes. They're yeah. markers, they totally are. And that's why it's so important to me for for this understanding and this look to be shown in media specifically so that other people can become comfortable with it and not everyone is just staring all the time because there's a lot of that. It looks really different. So it looks really beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but I, I just really, I think that it's important for people to see it and just become comfortable with it because there's nothing different about me except for that I just don't have hair. Like what a, it's a, such a small thing really. Mm. My thought is just that if I can, you know, be a leader or um, a role model for other people going through this, that they won't feel so alone, you know? Um, because I was totally alone when I was going through it. This week at the games has just been so special because I've, I've actually met five or six different women who have alopecia who came up to me and said, you know, I came up from Denver to meet you. I've never met anyone else with alopecia. And we've shared some really incredible moments together of just... Well, what you're doing for, for, for women across the board is, Abby, it's incredible. Like normalizing being different and making it incredibly beautiful. Just the way you own it is, is inspiring on, on every level. It Thanks, really man. is. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to, to hear that. I imagine that um, to meet those five or six women who are like, no, I came here to see and to meet you. In the short time that I've gotten to know you, I know that you don't do what you do for attention. You, know, you do what you do because that's you getting to stand in the entirety of your being. And if people like it and, and can appreciate it, awesome. But like, you're doing this to, to, to live and to be. Yeah. But it's also an opportunity so. for those people, which I'm sure you're seeing is like, you know, there's a saying, if, if you can see it, you can be it. Mm -hmm. And someone like yourself presenting fully and wholly in, in, in these type of spaces, they drove up here from Denver because they're like, I can do that shit too. Yeah, it's so humbling, man. It's frankly, it's kind of uncomfortable for me sometimes because I'm just more of an introverted person and I'm just, I'm pretty even keeled and kind of quiet. Um, so it's been a journey for me to kind of push myself out of my shell I've really had to push myself to kind of uh, get out of my comfort zone and step forward into that. And, and whether it's someone with alopecia or just someone who has vitiligo or has psoriasis or some, something that they're Anything. not, it's so many things, right? So many things in which, ah, I, I'm not yeah. normal. Yeah, and it's per people are just looking for permission to be themselves. That's all it is, you know? Well, I think that you're you're just beginning to scratch the surface um, of, of 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 what you're building and who you're impacting, and there's there's an army of of people that are standing behind you, being like, yes, let let's go. So, different is dope, and Abby has an army. 
<laughs> Thanks, man. It means the world. In a completely different direction, um, Max, you know, at the outset of this conversation, you were talking about how the world, you know, we're sitting here in this like this idyllic space, right? Just bathing in, in nature and the frequency is high. And so you walk around in a space like this and people are just like, yeah, and there's all of this great energy ex exchange. Meanwhile, in so many places on this planet, shit is just bad. You know, we have a major conflict taking place in the world, uh, in, in Ukraine. And you, you, you feel it and it's like, what can I do? Um, but you were struck in a very, very powerful way to take the type of action that like, I still can't comprehend. We are all brothers, we are all sisters. Like I said before, we just happened to be born on that piece of land. They just happened to be born in Ukraine. And because of that, this war has been bestowed on them. Um, so yeah, on the, third, on the third day of the war, I was just, I was just in tears watching the news. I couldn't, I couldn't get my eyes off it. And uh, I said I needed to go. I needed to head to the border and, and see how I could help. I've a bit of um, experience in, in humanitarian crisis response. And so I knew, <clears throat> apologies, I knew I could make a difference. Flew to the border of Ukraine on the Polish side and traveled for three days, built up a lot of connections on the border of the people that were helping. And, you know, war is a whole different animal. Um, and it brings out the worst in mankind, but then it can also bring out a silver lining, you know, and, and that silver lining was the response by predominantly the Polish people. So after the three days, got, got to Warsaw, called as many of, as, of, of my friends as I could, set up a GoFundMe um, and used kind of a concept that we developed in Nepal in 2015 after the earthquake of, of transparency through social media. How much did you raise? So we're at $800,000 um, right now and um, buying everything from, you know, from, from food, from canned food that we're sending into Ukraine, from clothes when, when it was like still coming out of winter. Um, bought three ambulances in Italy uh, last week that we're exporting now to Ukraine and we're, we're you filling. Bought, you, you bought ambulances in Italy and yeah. you're sending them to Ukraine. Yeah, 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 because, yeah. Yeah, so supply chain, we can't find any ambulances anywhere else in Europe. So yeah, we're trying to pull them in from everywhere. We set up um, logistical channels um, from the US, we've got tourniquets, incredibly harrowing, but also it just motivates you to, to do what you can for those that, that really need it. And I don't think I've ever experienced people that need it more than, than in war times. It, it's, just, it's just powerful that you chose to do something. Um, you can't fix it all. You, you can't fix it all. And there's a lot of people that might have seen this story and that'll be listening and watching this, that they're at home, they don't know what to do, they feel helpless, they feel, they, they feel like they can't, can't make a difference. That everyone can do something, whether it's donating a dollar or five dollars or 50,000 if you have it, whether it's telling other people about it, keeping it at the top of people's minds, sending an email to a politician, no matter how small it is, it's strength in numbers and it really, it really does all make a difference. And I've, I've seen it firsthand and it's the truth. That's awesome. It's something about the tonality of that, of that, of that statement, right? There's, what can you do? Or what can you do? Mm -hmm. What can you do? Um, and that's what both of you embody, you know? What, what, what can I do with the circumstances that I have to actually make an impact and make a difference. And um, it's beautiful. I appreciate you both um, sharing your stories and your perspectives. Uh, many people will be inspired to figure out what it is that they can do um, from getting to hear your stories. Well, thank you, Salam. And yeah. I mean, we haven't touched on that, but you've, you, you've done a lot in your life and you've impacted a lot of people and, and inspired an incredible amount of people. So for, for those that know you, they know the impact that you've made and that I know that you will continue to make, so uh, we're sharing this in, in very good company. Yeah, thank you. Couldn't man. agree more. It's, it's uh, you know, you, you got to live to give. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, mm. and the, the more that I, that I live and get to, get to have these experiences that have 
been so lucky in this lifestyle for the last 20 years, mm -hmm. you know, the more that I want to figure out ways uh, to continue to give. So whether it's with my foundation at Stoked or, or mentoring others, um, you know, and giving, creating more access yeah. um, to this lifestyle for people who live in communities in our, in, in this country who they just, they're never told that this is for them. Yeah. You know, and, and, they, and I'm realizing more and more that people in, in America don't realize that the, the reason why these spaces don't look like, uh, they don't look different or they're not reflective of, of um, the vast landscape of the different types of people that live in America is because it was designed that way. Yep. And so I'm, um, you know, building, doing as much as I can to help uh, build access uh, while I can while I'm here, you know? It feels good. It feels good to, to, to see people get affected um, by, by the outdoors because, uh, it's it's one of the few places that you can get real real peace and just get to be. Yeah, hundred percent. I appreciate that. Yeah. Shall we enjoy the rest of the day? I've got a Let's I've got a it. I've literally got a mountain to climb today. You you, you do. do. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. Yeah. To be continued. We are we are we are GoPro Mountain Games family for life. Yes, sir.